Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you are watching the Daily Dose of Hope. Congratulations on being here today. You made it to another day. You should be thanking God for that. Today, we're going to be thanking God for Romans chapter 8. Now, Romans chapter 8 is a chapter that I highly recommend everybody read. In fact, uh, it will help you to understand whether you're truly a believer or not. Uh, but in that chapter, or in addition to that chapter, is also how um, we ought to look at God and how God looks at us. And today, I'm titling this, We Have Been Adopted by God. That's right. In this chapter, in this uh, what we call passage in biblical terms, um, we are told in there that we have been adopted by God. So God truly is, as we mentioned yesterday, he truly is uh, calling us a child of God, and he is truly our Father. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a great Father, a loving Father. Lord, we, we say Abba Father. We say Daddy. Thank you, Lord, for being our Heavenly Father, Lord, our true God, one that will never, ever uh, change, one that has always been alive. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Lord, as we consider Romans chapter 8, verses 16, uh, excuse me, verses 14, 15, 16, and 17, Lord, help us to have our thinking caps on today. Help us to stay away from any distractions, Lord, and help us to focus in on your word. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Again, my name is Chaplain Bob, and you are watching The Daily Dose of Hope. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and uh, turn our attention to the Holy Bible. I'm going to actually put up on the screen uh, from BibleGateway.com. It's coming up here. There it is. Um, this, the BibleGateway.com, um, titles this passage in context, The Holy Spirit's Ministries. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to uh, use this whole, um, all these verses together. What I'm going to try to do today is focus in on mostly um, Abba Father, Daddy. But I want to make sure it's in context, as always. So let's look at verses 12 through 17. It's on the screen. It's kind of small there for you, but we'll do the best we can with it. And um, so then, brothers, we are not obligated to, fle to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if the Spirit, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. All those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, seeing that we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Okay, so we've got a lot there. That is uh, our um, in-context uh, verses. Now what I want to do is I want to focus, laser focus on verses 14, 15, uh, and 16 and a little bit of 17. I'll use 17 just as a um, uh, illustration. Uh, you have to understand that Romans 8, uh, 17 could be a whole sermon in itself, and I don't have time for that today, so we'll come back to Romans eight seventeen at another time. In fact, I think today as I was studying for this, I I did a four-part or a three-part study on Romans 8. So if you'd like to look that up on Facebook, you can look it up, or you can look it up on YouTube uh, and Rumble, and you can see that we did a three-part study on Romans 8, and you can enjoy some of those sermons. Okay, so with our Bibles open, 
Let's go to Romans 8.14. All those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Okay, that's what the Bible says. All those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Now, who is God's Spirit with a capital S? That is the Holy Spirit. I've been trying to teach you this for weeks now, that we either live in the flesh, we live for ourselves, or we live in the Spirit, okay? We're either living in sin, or we're living in righteousness, okay? When we live for the Spirit, when we live in God's Spirit, we're living in righteousness. We're thinking about things above. We're thinking about good things. We're thinking about things that are right, uh, things that are holy. We're thinking about doing the right thing. When we live in the flesh or in what we call sin, we're living in this world. In other words, we have struggles. We have difficulties. We're thinking about how we can get ahead. We're thinking about me, 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 me. We're thinking about wokeness. We're thinking about getting rid of gender, all this. And what happens is we start to live in the world we start to worship the world rather than we worship God. Paul says here in Romans 8, all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. You are a child of God, we mentioned yesterday, and this is the week of Father's Day. So again, we want to say welcome to all the fathers watching. Happy Father's Day in advance. But what we want to look at is God's fatherhood to us. And God tells us right away here that if we are led by his Holy Spirit, if we're in the Spirit, if, if we're living in the Spirit, we're doing our very best every day to crack open the Bible, we're doing our best every day to pray to the Lord, we're doing our best every day to share God, share Jesus Christ with other people, we're thinking of things above, then we're living in the Spirit. We're not going to be perfect. We are, in, we are a, a human being that does not have the ability to be perfect. It's impossible for us to be perfect. We are going to make mistakes. We are going to sin. Contrary to popular belief, sinners, or excuse me, Christians do sin. That is part of being a Christian life, in a Christian life. You have to understand also that being a Christian, you also have a Savior, and you know the difference between living in the Spirit and living in the world. So Paul just very simply says, all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. Now, let's go to the next verse, verse 15. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Okay? God doesn't give us a, a spirit of slavery. We're not his puppets. We're not required by him to love him. We do this on our own volition. Our own ideas uh, come out. Our own decisions come out to love God. So Paul says, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, okay? but you received the Spirit with a capital S of adoption. That's right. You, me, anybody that's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, perhaps you're not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ yet, but if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you receive the Spirit of adoption. That means the Holy Spirit, upon you saying, Jesus Christ is Lord, you were saved. And you're not just saved for um, what everybody looks to. I'm going to live in heaven forever. Of course, that's a big, big thing. But you're also allowed at that point in time to live in the Spirit because the Spirit comes and lives inside of you. Now, do I understand all of that as a, as a chaplain, as a Christian of well over 30 years? Uh, actually going on about 40 years. Do I believe that uh, yes, I believe it. Do I understand it? No, I don't understand all the mechanics behind it. But I know here Paul makes a point. He says, "But you received the spirit of adoption. I've been adopted into God's family. 
by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Now that word, Abba, Father, is a combination of the Hebrew and the Greek. And we can translate this into Daddy. You have been adopted. You have received the spirit of adoption. You've been adopted by God, by whom we cry out to God the Father, Abba, Father. Notice that Paul here uses the Hebrew and the Greek, so both the Jews and the Gentiles, meaning everybody, would recognize this. Daddy adopted you. God adopted you. Upon you believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are adopted into God's family. So no matter what, if you're an orphan or you haven't seen your parents like me in years, it's been since age 18 uh, that I uh, saw my mom. It's been since about the age of uh, 12, 13 that I saw my father. It's been a number of years. Do I still yearn for them, love them, uh, wish they were around together? Yes, that's not going to happen because I can't go back in the past. But the best thing for me is to know that I've been adopted by God. The moment at age 14 when I said, Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I want to be born again. I want to I know that I'm going to heaven. I followed the, the pastor that was preaching that day, and I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. When that happened... I was adopted into the family of God. I was adopted by God himself. And so it is right for me to call out, Abba, Father. Cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. Verse 16. The Spirit himself, Paul goes on to talk about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit. So each, each person that's watching this right now has a soul. You have a spirit inside of you, a soul. And it says here, Paul says, the spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. The Holy Spirit is re reassuring us here that we are God's children. We have been adopted by God. God truly is our Father in heaven. But he's not just this long lost Father in heaven that we can't touch. We're going to go live with him forever. In fact, beyond that, better than that, is he wanted us, he wanted me, he wanted you to live with him forever and ever in heaven. Now, I want you to look around. Look to the right, look to the left, look backwards, forward, wherever you're at. Not everybody that you're looking at is going to be in heaven. Because there are still going to be some that will deny truth. They will deny this book. They will deny this passage. They think it's quite odd or quite weird to be called God's children. How could a God want me to be his child? Here's the answer. God's a living God. He's a real God. He's always been and he always will be. All other gods, I've been preaching this for a long time, all other gods that are here on earth are just dead. They've lived and they've died. Buddha's dead. All the gods of Hindu, dead. All the secular gods of the Greek empire, dead. Allah, dead. Only the one true God, Abba, Father, is alive. And that's who calls us his son and his daughter. We are truly children of God, adopted by God. Now, let's go to verse 17. And I'm not going to have a lot of time to spend on verse 17. I just want to illustrate a few things here. So go back to 16. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children, verse 17. And if children, so if we are children of his, also heirs. 
heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. What's an heir? H-E-I-R. An heir is somebody that receives something just because of who they are and that the person that gives does it because of who they are. God freely gives to us all that he has. It says here, and if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. You receive, I receive everything that Christ has received from God. Everything. That's what a co-heir is. And Paul goes on to say, seeing that we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Okay, we're not going to have time to go into that second part, but I want you to understand here that if you are a child of God, you're not just a name named a child of God. You don't just call God the Father, um, Abba Father, but you have benefits, and that's called being a co-heir of Jesus Christ, being an heir of God. Uh, when somebody says, um, I heard that your mother passed away, you know, my condolences, I'm sorry about that. And you say, well, I, I appreciate that, you know, appreciate that, but my mother is in heaven, she was a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and the person says, praise God, that's really great. And um, I understand, you know, that your mother uh, left you some property, or your mother left you some money. When the person that dies leaves something, that's uh, called, when you receive that, that's called, I inherited that. That word inherent has the word heir in it. So when you receive something from a person that has passed on, usually your close family member, you're an heir of that person. They're passing that on to you. And that's what God does. He looks at us as children of God. He looks at us as an heir, just as he looked at Jesus as an heir. We are, in fact, according to Paul, called co-heirs with Christ. So, God loves you. God calls you a child, and you have been adopted by God into his family. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a great father. Thank you for adopting me. Thank you for adopting all those that are watching right now that have called you a son, that have called you father, that have looked at your son, Jesus Christ, as a savior they've said jesus christ is lord uh, that they've been saved lord and we know that all of those that call that out call out abba father are saved thank you lord for making it easier than we ever thought to be in heaven now we know it wasn't easy for you because you had to send your only son and you had to sacrifice your only son on our for our benefit Lord, thank you so much for doing that. We love you, Lord. We praise your holy, holy name. We say, Abba, Father, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Now, if, if, you, didn't, uh, if you didn't understand everything that we talked about today, I encourage you to go back and read Romans 8, 14, 17 or you could read it in the context 12 to 17 and study it look at it again watch this video back again we are actually considered adopted by god at the moment of believing in the lord jesus christ that's great news again happy father's day don't forget to treat your earthly father in a special way this weekend i know you will god bless you all Let's say goodbye with a little bit of Easy to Forget by Skyly Shea. Here she is. Here she was. <laughs> Where's Skyly? There she is. Okay, here we go. <laughs>